All right, let's make your first game in Unity 3D in 15 minutes. So we're going to start by making a new project. You're going to select uni Universal 3D, give it a name, select a location, and hit Create Project. In the next 15 minutes, we'll code a simple Unity 3D game from scratch. You'll learn how to move a player, collect items, and win the game, all in C Sharp. We'll add a plane for the ground, a cube for the player, and three to five collectible spheres. Add a plane by right-clicking in the hierarchy window. Go to 3D object, select plane, name it ground. Make it 10 by 10 in the inspector window under scale for X and Z. Right-click in the hierarchy window, go to 3D object, Select cube, name it player. Move it up, move it up 0.5 in the Y. Add a collectible sphere. Right click in the hierarchy window, go to 3D object, select sphere, call it collectible. Move it up half a unit. Actually, let's move this one up one unit in the Y. And let's move it away from the player. Let's create a Unity script. In the project window, right click on Assets, go to Create, select Folder, name it Scripts. Right click on the Scripts folder in the project window, go to Create, select Mono Behavior Script. Name this script Player Movement. Double click on the script to open it. Write the following lines of code. In the top, after the public class player movement, you're going to want to add a serialize field attribute private float speed. Set it equal to five. We'll make speed lowercase. Delete the start method in update write the following float move x equals input dot get axis horizontal in quotes float move y equals input dot get axis vertical Vector three move equals new vector three move x zero move y transform dot translate move times speed times time dot delta time. Quick overview to understand the script. Serialize field makes a private variable visible in the inspector window. We'll see this after we go back to Unity. Float is a type of integer that has decimal points. So this could be 5.0 or 5 point anything or one point something. Speed is the name of the variable. Void update is a method that Unity uses to run through every component in Unity at runtime. Unity will run this method as fast as it can on every game object or every component in your game. Float move X gets input from the player on the horizontal axis, and float move Y gets input on the player controller from the vertical axis. In this case, move X and move Y are either 0, 1, or negative 1. Vector 3 is a number, uh, is a data type that has three numbers in it. In this case, we have our move X, 0, and then our move Y. Transform translate moves our game object in the given direction based on our input at the given speed over time. 
time.delta time is the time between updates. Let's go back to Unity. Select your player. Drag your player movement onto your player. In the scene window, select your camera from the hierarchy. Make sure your scene window has a view similar to mine. Hit Control Shift F, and that moves your camera. Hit the play button at the top. In your game window, hit WASD. We can change the speed in the inspector window by selecting our player, going to the inspector window, and typing in a new speed. I set it to 10. I'm going to hit play. And I can hit WASD. And you can see my player can move faster now. I can also change this property during runtime. 25. The property is not saved because it is in runtime. When I stop, the property value will change back to its original value. Add a new script for collectibles. Right click on the scripts folder, go to create, mono behavior script. Call this collect item. Double click on it to open it. Erase everything inside the class declaration. Add the following lines, void on trigger enter open parentheses visual studio will auto complete this method for you it adds a collider called other as a parameter of the on trigger enter method anytime this method gets called it sends in this collider unity will call the on trigger enter method when something collides with a trigger collider on an object we will see that in Unity shortly. Write the following lines. If other compare tag player destroy game object. This line checks the tag on the incoming collider object to see if it's called player. If it is, it destroys this game object. Hit save. Let's go back to Unity. We will add a tag to the player called player. Select player, go to the inspector, select the tag dropdown, and find player. Select that. Click on your collectible, drag collect item into the inspector window. You should see collect item at the bottom of the component stack. Make sure to check the trigger is trigger on the sphere collider on the collectible item. Click on the player, click on add component at the bottom of the co component stack. Type in rigid and select rigid body from the list. Select is kinematic. Hit play and test. The collectible is destroyed when it is collided with. Move the camera in closer. Create more collectibles. Hit Control D after selecting the collectible in the hierarchy. Move a collectible to another position. Hit Control D again. Move the collectible again. Control D again. And one last time, Control D. You now have five collectible items in your game. Ensure that you can collect each one. Create a new script. Right click on the scripts folder in the project window and create a new mono behavior. Call this player collector. Double click to open it. Delete everything in the script. Create a new serialized field, serialized field. Make it private. It is an int and call it total items equals five. Make another serialized field. Hit tab to accept the auto complete. 
make it private, int, call it collected, equals zero. We'll make a new method called void on trigger, enter, and hit tab when it recommends a method. If other dot compare tag equals collectible, collected plus plus semicolon. Destroy other dot game object. If collected is greater than or equal to total items, debug dot log you win. Hit save. Remove the collected I the collect item component from all of your spheres. Add the player collector to your player game object. Select all of your collectible spheres. Go to your tab tag dropdown and add a new tag. Hit plus on the tags list, call it collectable. Select your spheres again, select the tag dropdown, select collectable. Hit play to test. You win. You win is printed in the console. Congratulations, you've created your first game. Hey guys, thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it got you moving in the right direction and I hope you learned a lot from it. If you want to see more tutorials like this or anything else, please feel free to leave comments down below. I also want to let you know about my upcoming course, Unity 101 Game Dev Bootcamp. It's meant for beginners who want to learn how to code and create projects quickly and cleanly. By the end of that course, you will have created your own game that you can customize and publish on your own. So look for the link below to sign up to get notified when it comes out. I also want to let you know about my 3D Unity conveyor belt asset, which is available on itch.io. Look for the link below for that. If you want to quickly add polished conveyor belts to your game with dynamic meshes and animated UVs that works with physics objects with no code required, then this is the asset for you. It's ideal for factory, automation, and puzzle games.